Welcome to another episode of the Pay, Play, Profit podcast. We're going to dive into a really hot topic that a lot of people have questions about. It's all about sales tax and not just about sales tax, but navigating sales tax on your own. And we have brought our most favorite strategic partner around sales tax, Alex Oxford, founder of the Tax Valet. Marilyn, are you ready for that conversation with Alex today? Oh, I love Alex and I love this topic. It can be very complex. So I'm, I'm very interested. A fascinating concept. There you go. And since we all love sales tax, I'm not quite sure if I'm in that camp, but I'll get there with you guys. Here we go. All right, Alex, how excited are you to be here with me and Marilyn on the Pay, Play, Profit podcast today talking about your favorite topic, sales tax. There's nothing more fascinating in the world to talk about. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for coming on. And I feel like we've been in a relationship and a partnership for a couple of years now, right? Like That's right. Two and a half years almost. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been really fantastic. We've grown as friends and we have mutual clients and your team is like the bomb.com when it comes to sales tax, in my opinion, because nobody out there is delivering a sales tax experience like Tax Valet. And there's nobody that I think can actually speak to sales tax better than you. And so just thank you again for being on here and bringing your talent, your time and your wisdom to this conversation for all of our listeners. Yeah, no problem. Happy to provide any insight, guidance or learnings uh, for your audience. Yeah. And so we're going to dive into it for e-commerce sellers, Amazon FBA sellers, and even online business owners. Hint, hint. um, if you don't think sales tax doesn't apply to you, you might actually be surprised. Um, So let's just talk first. Like, can you provide an overview of how businesses should think about sales tax, especially when they're first starting out? Like there's seasonality to sales tax maybe and how you think about it. I'm not sure. But what would you say to that question? Absolutely. So for a business that is just getting started, what I always recommend is that you just understand the basics and you know what to look out for as you begin growing and scaling your business. Almost every business, if they're selling physical or digital products, is going to have an obligation at some point in the lifetime of their business. And depending on the state you're in, you might have an obligation on day one. So the first thing that I would tell a business that is trying to navigate sales tax on their own is let's just try to have an understanding of all of the concepts and terminology and just understand the big picture here. So at a glance, when we're talking about sales tax, we're thinking we need to think about a couple of things. The first is where does the business have a sales tax collection responsibility? And this is what we refer to as sales tax nexus. So which states does the business need to be collecting and remitting tax in? Second concept is how big are their liabilities? How big is the business's liabilities in each of the states where they owe sales tax? Third is, are the products that they're selling even taxable in the states? And is this something that they even need to be considering? And lastly, how are you going to get registered to get permits and set up your online systems? It could be an e-commerce platform, could be a home-baked platform for delivering digital content so that you're accurately calculating and collecting the taxes. And of course, there's the filing and payments as well once everything is set up. So at a glance, those are the, the, the major topics within sales tax when you're getting set up on your own. Yeah. Well, what I have to say about this is, first of all, wow, like you gave people really five key questions or things they need to evaluate in their business right now totally actionable as they're listening to this podcast. It's even going to be tucked away inside our key takeaways PDF that they can download in this episode, which will also guys include Alex and his contact information and things like that. And we'll get into more of like who he helps and how he helps later in the episode. But there's an action plan right there with the questions. Another thing, there was a thing that was coming up for me, Marilyn. I don't know if it came up for you, but you know, our success path to profit says you got to have your systems first. And those to me were all like assess and what's the system to make this happen. Yeah. And what I, on? Yes. And what I loved about it, it, it can be very overwhelming. And Alex put it in a very, hey, there's step one, there's step two, there's step three. Just start on this base level and you can grow from there. So, yeah, yeah. I, I love the explanation. 
And Alex, Absolutely. would it be fair to say that um, systems will save you when it comes to sales tax? That you. Absolutely. Having systems and processes in place from the beginning are absolutely key to getting your sales tax compliance set up for your own business. In fact, one of the foundational principles here at Tax Valet is build IKEA furniture correctly the first time. So I don't know about you, but if you've ever gone to IKEA and purchased a bookshelf or something and you've gone back home to put it together, you didn't really read the directions and you just threw yourself into it. I have had a number of experiences where I put the pieces together and I get halfway done. I realize I am not doing this correctly. And then I have to take it all apart and start from scratch. And sales tax is very much like that. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have a strategy, and you don't have a system for being strategic about setting things up correctly in the right over in the right order, you might get to a point where you're creating a lot more work for yourself later down the road. So absolutely, Jess, having a strategy and plan is going to make a huge difference. And having a system and process is going to cut down on a lot of the time that you spend day to day just administering this. Yeah. And I would even venture to say like, this is, I mean, experimentation is one thing we talk about experimentation in terms of like, it's you really can't experiment with sales tax as much as you might want to experiment with sales tax. Like you need the directions first and then you need to follow the directions pretty much. Right. Yeah. You and don't want to create, you don't want a creative accountant. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Not sales tax. No. You do not. And, and you want to know what you're up against and what you need to pay attention to early in the game so you can have the right strategy in place. So speaking of strategy, what do e-commerce and online businesses, where do they actually owe sales tax? Um, where should they think about? You brought up that scary nexus uh, terminology. So maybe just explain it as simply as you can what nexus is and then how that trend transitions down into where you need to pay. Yeah, absolutely, Jess. So one of the first things I would say is there is some legal and technical jargon in the sales tax world, but it doesn't have to be scary if you just put your head around it and you just Google a couple of terms here. I think so many business owners have the mindset of, oh my gosh, sales tax is so overwhelming and complicated. There's no way that I can deal with this on my own. And for some businesses, that might be true based on their complexity, but I can guarantee you that there, if there's a will, there is a way to do this. But the first concept here is where do the business where do the businesses actually owe sales tax? Where do they have sales tax nexus? And I could talk for much longer than the audience would probably want to listen uh, when it comes to the concept of sales tax nexus. But we're primarily looking at two key factors. The first is physical presence and the second is economic nexus. Mm -hmm. So physical presence, if your business has a physical presence in a state, by and large, they're going to have a sales tax collection responsibility. And it's very easy to have physical presence in a state, particularly for e-commerce businesses, if they're working with fulfillment houses, such as Amazon FBA warehouses. If you have inventory, even if it's just transient and temporary in a state, that could create sales tax nexus. But we also mm -hmm. have to look at uh, if you have your own company's delivery vehicles or employees or even contractors working within the state that can also create a physical presence. Mm -hmm. And it used to be up until 2018 that you had to have physical presence or some variation thereof in order to have a tax collection responsibility in the state. But all of this change in 2018 with the landmark Supreme Court case, which was Wayfair versus South Dakota. And mm -hmm. I'll spare you all the details there, but long story short, the Supreme Court came out and said, the guidance that we created that said that you had to have a physical presence in a state before a state could impose a tax collection requirement for you is no longer, it's not the only thing. We're going to allow states to create something called economic nexus. Mm -hmm. And so states have been passing economic nexus laws that say if you cross a certain sales or transaction count threshold, you now can have a sales tax collection responsibility in their state, even if you've never been there, you've never set foot there, and you know nothing about the state. Now, these thresholds vary on a state-by-state -state basis, and there is some nuance there that we won't get into today. But in general, the economic nexus provisions are, are generally $100,000 in sales or 200 separate 
transactions. Some states want to look at gross sales. Some only look at taxable retail sales. Some want you to exclude or include marketplace sales. So there is some, some nuance there. We do have a free download on our website in the resources section on the taxvalet.com, which has a breakdown of the economic nexus thresholds state by state. So for a growing business that's just getting started, you might not have economic nexus in any state. I hope that the audience, the listeners do cross those thresholds soon yes. because that means that they're making a whole lot more sales. But from the very beginning, it's something that you want to keep your eye on, but you don't necessarily have to be concerned with right from the very beginning. But physical presence, if you have a physical presence in a state, but you don't cross the economic nexus threshold, you're still going to meet the physical presence requirement and have a tax collection responsibility. So one of the biggest misconceptions that uh, I come across is businesses saying, well, I have physical presence, but I don't cross the economic nexus threshold. So therefore, I don't have to pay sales tax or I cross the economic nexus threshold on my Amazon sales, but not on my website sales. So I don't have to worry about my website, but I, I do have to worry about it for Amazon. It just doesn't work that way. We're looking at the entire business in, in its entirety. Yes. And I think what I really, there's two things. Number one, the whole business is dealing with the whole multi-state situation. Like when you decide to set up your business, for those of you that are listening, we what the landmark ruling that Alex just spoke about did is it gave us all extreme clarity on how we needed to actually walk in those states for sales tax where prior to that landmark ruling, that clearly clarity didn't actually exist to the degree it does now. So it wasn't prior to 2018. It wasn't a matter of we must go. It was, should we go and when? And now after the ruling is we must go. But one big point that I really love, and I want uh, Marilyn to like chime in on this here is you said something very practical, like number one, guys, that download, we'll put the link in the show notes, but you need to grab that download just so you kind of understand what that looks like at each state level. And you need to really get familiar with at least the terms of physical and economic nexus and understand that the test applies to both. But the nexus download is not only going to kind of give you the milestone of when you need to be thinking about this, but, but Alex also spoke to the practicality for that small business owner that's from get going from that startup to scale ready transition, Marilyn, and that, that should have perked your ears up for real because like that's one of the things that we love about Alex and the team at Tax Valet is that they're being very practical. Would you say that's the case? It is. And I love the practicality conversation because you can get in the weeds about the technicality of, of, of all of these states and what they require. So that's one reason why we line up so well with Alex and uh, Tax Valet is the practicality conversation. It doesn't need to be overwhelming. You just have to start, know what the compliance rules are, and build from there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know where to start, that's a great opportunity to have a conversation with our team or even Alex's team at Tax Valet, depending on where you fall. Because again, they specialize in done for you sales tax management. We're going to talk about that. But they also contribute to our Profit Hero community uh, where we can actually mentor and guide you on the things you need to know on your way to needing that particular level of service to maintaining your business. And so we talk about pay, play, profit happens because you take care of the things that you need to take care of in your business. So ignoring sales tax is not a plan. In fact, it will take away every ounce of pay, play, and profit you have if you don't get a handle on what needs to happen when, when it comes to sales tax. Can I get an amen, guys? I don't know. Or whatever. Amen, <laughs> amen for sure. <laughs> so now that we've kind of talked about where do we need to be, it, you know, just uh, Alex, you kind of like volleyed the idea around physical nexus and economic nexus and things like that. Um, and you talked about how people tend to delineate or compartmentalize and say, well, it's just here. So no worries, you know, for this, you know, they don't want to take into account the activity of the whole business. So the next question is, is are all transactions that are generated online a taxable event? That's a very good question. And like many things in sales tax, the answer is it depends. Oh, so, no. Yeah, I oh, oh, no. A joke. I'm telling you, see, Marilyn, every time I talk to you tax people, you throw out this whole, t it depends. It, Alex, we have a running joke around here. It's my greatest pet peeve in life. 
as a business owner and as a person trying to help business owners, every time you guys give me an it depends, I lose a little piece of my soul. We <laughs> so need a button. A joke. <laughs> need a button. Uh, we press yeah. when they say it depends. Yeah. 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 So here we are. We're back into the it depends land. But for the people, we're going to try to do whatever we can to help you navigate the it depends. So what would you say to that? Absolutely. So I would generally say if you're selling a physical product, then it's almost always going to be subject to sales tax unless there is some specific exemption for the product. So some common exemption could be medical devices, supplements can, and grocery and food items can be exempt in many states. But when we talk about digital products, if you're selling an online course or an ebook or access to a community, these typically will fall under the services categorization in a state and a state may or may not have included that within what they consider to be taxable. Mm -hmm. So any company that's selling anything digital, like if you're selling an online course, online course, we have to be particularly careful to figure out is what they're selling taxable. Yes, absolutely. And I just want to kind of come in here and just strongly seed this conversation for our online business owners, or even if you have an e-commerce product right now. And so number one, if you're not, if you have an e-commerce product, you're selling a physical product online and you haven't even been thinking about sales tax or you think it's so far away that it doesn't apply to you. I'm going to challenge you right now in this moment to say it absolutely applies to you and you need a plan. Number two, well, or what would you say, Alex? Would you? I would say, just assuming things can be a recipe for disaster. And so at the very least, taking 30 minutes out of your time just to poke around and look at the laws just to have some confidence and clarity is going to be a really good investment. Because once you much rather have some answers now than realize you're wrong five years from now when you potentially get pulled into an audit and have to pay all those back taxes plus penalties and interest, it could be substantial. Yeah, teaser, teaser. We're going to talk about those big, biggest audit risks in a minute, peeps. The next thing is I'm getting very bold and, and, and passionate inside our own organization. And we are, um, as a group, about the fact that the online business owner, the person selling the membership or the course or the music or the script or the email, like this tangible digital product, um, I think there's almost like an atmosphere right now that um, because they don't sell a physical product and because they've gotten to ride this, uh, f frankly, road of like, I don't have to comply with sales tax. They're, they're, I feel like a lot of people are going to be really surprised when they start realizing that they are literally an e-commerce company too. They just distribute digitally. Would that be safe to say? Absolutely. Because it's coming, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's Lock coming, winter. especially. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with everything that's going on with the coronavirus right now, the states are broke. And I think it's going to take a little bit of time, maybe one or two years, but we're seeing already job postings in Texas and in other states where they're hiring a substantial amount of state auditors and they're going to start coming after their money. And the businesses that should be collecting tax but aren't are going to be their top priority because that's where most of the money can be found, unfortunately. Yeah, and those online platforms that our online business owners are used to using for delivery, like even ClickFunnels or Kajabi or what have you, they've already said that part of what they get to do is they get to they have to have that sales tax collection, that ability to add tax for you to collect tax. So we are none of us are immune. We're all in a multi-state world. Um, we're in a global world and we're all doing e-commerce online, whether it's physical or digital. So again, for our online business owners, our service-based business owners, or even if you're in a brick and mortar store and you're you're not and you create some kind of training product or information product or whatever, all of this is going to apply to you too. And what I find, Alex, I don't know if this is true, and you can speak to it for just a minute, maybe, is in, in the online space, it's almost like people have seven different shopping carts. And that makes for a sales tax nightmare sometimes because it's like seven different shopping carts. Or more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or more, for sure. I mean, this is one of the things that we have to look at from a sales tax perspective. It's really two things. The first is, are we going to be able to get the data that we need in order to process sales tax returns? And most of the time, it's no issue. We can pull the reports and the transaction details. But the second 
consideration here is the tax collection and tax calculation settings mm. because each of these channels, whether it's Amazon or WooCommerce or Shopify or ClickFunnels or insert the name of your, yeah, Stripe, your favorite platform. Soft, you know, yeah. Report, it does not matter. Yeah, absolutely. Each of these platforms has their own sales tax settings platform, their own tax setting panel that they want you to set up. And they're not exactly set up the way that they should be if you're going to calculate and collect taxes the best way. Now, this is one of the conversations we have with each of our clients, which is, look, you're selling on this particular tool and they don't give us a way to calculate tax at the rooftop level. They might just give us one tax rate for the entire state. And that's better than not being able to collect any tax, but it can create exposure for your business. And we do, we say that you can only do the best that you can with the tools that you have. And so we work with our clients to come up with a plan, but it's something that you have to be mindful of because if you go into ClickFunnels and you go into Shopify and you go into Amazon, each of these tax settings are going to be completely different from one another. And so you have to make sure you read the documentation for these and you see how they have built their platform specifically yeah and if you fail to click a button you should have clicked when you collect sales tax and then all of a sudden all this sales tax yo you, you never collected that's a problem yep. too right <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, one of the biggest mistakes that we see is if you're working with a virtual assistant or even just an internal team that's going and setting up products on your behalf, uh, say within Shopify, if they don't check the box that says it's subject to sales tax or they accidentally click the box that says that it's exempt from sales tax, we might not realize until it's time to pay the tax that you didn't actually collect it. So uh, another common mistake is working with a third party listing tool. So there's a lot of tools out there that will list and, and make sure that your products are all listed the same across all these different platforms. We've had these listing tools come in and accidentally turn off tax settings on all of the platforms oh. and the business didn't even realize it. And it was just a bug in, 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 with, with the software. So something to keep your eye on. And good luck getting someone else in your third-party network to take responsibility for your sales tax responsibility, right? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck with that. So this is not a set it and forget it kind of question, activity. This is a serious, it, it's hard to even make serious work fun around this topic. I think the way that it can be fun is that we're prepared and we know what we're doing and we have the systems in place to protect us and all the checks and balances do exist. And that feels fun to me. I don't know about anybody else, but <laughs> feels fun to be protected, you know, is how I'm thinking about this process. So speaking of protection, um, part of the reason why you wanna have these conversations early, you wanna have it frankly with people who eat, sleep and breathe sales tax. You shouldn't be like looking for the shop that just popped up around the corner a week ago because this is a big, hairy, complex thing. Uh, but let's talk a little bit uh, just about what are the potential like risks for audit and what's the best way to protect yourself in the event of an audit? Very good question, Jess. So going through the most common reasons for sales tax audits, I'd say number one is not having a permit right? Mm. If you don't have a sales tax permit, you're supposed to be collecting and remitting, um, then you'll get found out eventually. But this is what's going to create the biggest liability for you because you have not been collecting tax for who knows how long it could be years. And the state is going to come and, and collect. I'd say another big audit flag is if you have anywhere listed on your site, anywhere, anywhere, saying we don't charge sales tax, it's only going to be a matter of time before a state knocks on your door and says, are you sure about that? Yeah. Um, Washington, for example, has these bots that go online and they look for language like this, like this on websites. And they say, well, you know, are you familiar with the economic nexus law? You look like a pretty big business. We, we have reason to believe you might have crossed the threshold. We're going to audit you. So if you're not charging tax and even if you're not charging tax and you don't have to, best bet is just not to say anything. And if you are charging tax and you're supposed to, make sure it's separately stated. Don't have it inclusive in the price because this could come back to haunt you later on. I'd say another big audit flag, a big audit risk is going to be if you're an e-commerce business that's selling to resellers. 
Mm-hmm. If you're selling to resellers and not collecting the resale exemption certificates from your resellers, then you as the business are carrying that liability and risk. And maybe you're working with a reseller who said, oh, I'll get it to you later. Well, if you never get that certificate and you're audited, then you're going to have to own all of that liability because unfortunately, it's sort of guilty until proven innocent in the tax world. The transaction is going to be assumed taxable until you can prove otherwise. Wow. Okay. Well, you heard it here first, peeps. Like, that's what you need to know. And the other thing that I want to do to kind of piggyback that, and I think it's the perfect way to kind of button up what we've been talking here, and Marilyn, I want to give you some time to give your thoughts on this, is we used to do sales tax inside the bottom line CPA, right? And and do we do sales tax now? No. So no. glad that Alex came along. <laughs> yeah, no, we do not we do not manage sales tax now. Um, we love the education about sales tax and making sure the right resources and the right people are in front of our um, clients and our community, but we don't do it for a reason. So Marilyn, I would just like with your you know, you've been a CPA for more than 25 years. You you actually have other businesses that do have a, a big sales tax liability and things like that that you have to manage. You filed six sales tax on your own for years. What should people be thinking about when in terms of like finding the right partner and why should they really make sure that they're playing at some point you're not managing sales tax on your own? Well, I understand, you know, every early uh, start company probably wants to do it on their own. They probably should understand how it works on their own. That's a good place to start. But as you get busier, um, things will slip through the cracks. And that's where you really see your exposure. The penalties on not paying and filing sales tax on time are big. They're really pretty substantial. Um, The big um, exposure to me when you aren't collecting and should be collecting in an audit is everything you have to pay to the state is right out of your pocket. You didn't collect it. You didn't factor it into your sales price. So it's directly out of your pocket. So you need to understand that. So as soon as you can, um, like we at the bottom line feel, you've got to be in partnership with someone that you can talk to, you can ask your questions, and and ultimately have them take over the the day-to-day operations of filing um, your sales tax in the right states, and set up all your systems correctly in order to do that. You know, I'm all about, as a business owner, you you have to be as as compliant as you can with the rules out there so that you can sleep at night. You don't need that extra stress. You don't need that added um, exposure. And if you do something, if you do something wrong by mistake, it's a mistake. You fix it, you move forward. Okay, so you don't need to really overstress about these things as long as your attitude is let's get compliant as soon and as uh, on top of things as we can as we go so Mm -hmm. that's kind of my feeling about taxes in general whether it be sales tax or income tax because really income tax is is piggybacking off sales tax right now which is a whole nother conversation yeah absolutely and I know there's like we could be on this call all day I think right the three of us talking about yeah. sales tax and I think we could actually make it sound like yes I want to go to this podcast like we're so entertaining I know these peeps are getting a lot of value <laughs> out of this that they would just stay on the line but I think that's a great way to kind of land the land the plane basically of And the earlier you start, we say this all the time, the earlier you start, the easier it is to navigate. When you're trying to come back in after rapid growth two or three years later and then trying to like, where have we been and where are we going? Because that's, you know, Alex, I guess I'm looking for a cosine of a seed here. Like when you get to that permit registration process, if you've been in business for a while, you're going to have some things to navigate around that, right? Absolutely. And picking, piggybacking off of what Marilyn said, I see two mindsets very frequently. The first is a small business owner that is so, so stressed over sales tax. And then the second is the big business owner who doesn't care at all. Mm -hmm. And both of these mindsets, I think, are unhealthy. You don't need to be stressed out about it. Um, You don't need to feel overwhelmed, particularly if you're smaller. We just got to come up with a plan and get you to the right place. But you also don't want to just blow everything off. So just taking a reasonable middle path approach is going to be the most healthy. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's a great place to look. 
just, you know, that's a good takeaway, guys. And those will be in our show notes and our key takeaway PDF that you can download on this side of the episode. So, Alex, I just want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and all the conversations we've had. Marilyn, as always, it's been a blast, right? Uh, Always. Yeah. All right, peeps, that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Pay, Play, Profit podcast. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. But before we go, it is sharing is caring time. We want you to join us each week. So if you haven't already hit subscribe for this podcast, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen, please do so. We would also love, 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 love for you to consider leaving a five-star review or share this episode with a fellow e-commerce, online, or service-based business owner that you think would benefit from gaining more pay, play, and profit in their business and life today. We hope you join us next week and remember to download this episode's key takeaways from our website at www.profithero365.com slash payplayprofit. Until then, be kind to yourself and each other.